Wow. Wait, I kind of want to get my coffee. <laughs> Very on brand. Why is the Macy's Thanksgiving parade so scary? Yeah. The idea of those, what are they called? Floats? Floats? Yeah. Like just <laughs> popping. Bumping into buildings, yeah. bumping into people. Yeah. There's like 70 <laughs> people just carrying like yeah. that giant inflatable baby Snoopy. thing. Yeah. What is yeah. that? Sarah's here. Well, An OG. For those of you who don't have the pleasure of knowing Sarah, Sarah, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> My primary role <laughs> is as a Blessed Is She writer. I. I'm a graduate student. That's like number, so it's like number one, blessed is she writer. <laughs> number two, I'm in grad school. What else is there to say? You're a big Drake fan. Huge. Which I appreciate. Yeah. Basically my goal for this video is that a voice clip from this will end up on a Drake song. Yeah. <laughs> if Drake could just sample this video on his next album. Please. Hopefully in 2022. Yeah. If you guys know Drake, just send him the link to this video, please. And thank you. Anyways, we called Sarah here not only to comment on Drake's album dropping schedule. We're talking about another guy whom you're a big fan of. Sure. If you're gonna send John Henry Newman a voice memo, what does it say? I feel like I ask for Newman's intercession every day and I feel like I'm sending him little mini, little yeah. mini voice memos. I think he said it in his book, Idea of a University. He said that the mission of the church is the regeneration of hearts. I think I wow. ask him probably most often. I'm like, teach me, teach me more about that. Ask the Lord to regenerate my heart. So like, that's probably the voice memo I send most often. I first, discovered Newman when I was in London. I spent a semester in London, which was the loneliest, mm. worst semester of my life. I was working in parliament and I had new friends and my spiritual director told me I should read Newman's poetry. Mm. And so I would, but then I would I would forget about him. Yeah. But then like when you're in most churches in, in that area, you see like a mosaic of yeah. him or a statue of him. So I was like, this old decrepit man <laughs> won't leave me alone. He's everywhere. And his poetry did like really sit with me. I just loved his character as a writer. And so then when I returned to school the next year, my senior year, there was a class being offered on his life, literally John Henry Newman. And I was like, okay, I'm taking this class. And then the, so the guy I was dating at the time actually was enrolling in this class too. And a week into the class, I get broken up with. And I was gonna drop the class. Cause I was like, wow. well, I don't want to see this man yeah. twice a week. Like yeah. just John Henry Newman then. <laughs> It's not worth that. And I asked the Lord, like, Lord, do I drop this class? And the Lord was like, no, stay here, stay in the class. So I said, okay. Um, every week, like every every day I would come back to class and it was like Newman would respond to my rejection, respond to wow. my loneliness, respond to this process of grief I was in. I mean, we, we walked through his story. I mean, every era of Newman's life is so prolific. I mean, he writes like more than anyone. He's yeah. just constantly writing, constantly preaching. It was like each era responded to that month of yeah. whatever lie that I was wrestling with about who I was as a woman, the lie I was wrestling with about the church that resulted from this, this like breakup, which felt like a rejection of my spiritual character. And so I was like, is having a personal relationship with the Lord theologically sound? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like I was wrestling with stuff like that and I needed this grand intellect like Newman to come into my story and like correct all of that. Yeah, wow. And he's so, I mean, he is such a huge mind, but he actually has such a tender heart. And even his mission as a cardinal was, you know, heart speak to heart. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was just, he, he was a heart man, which no totally. one, no one talks about. Yeah. But he came to me that way, which is like why I needed him in that time. So I really see him as such a companion. He, he broke down so many of my walls. And after that, I was wow. like, I needed someone who was like that to, to soften me, intercede for me. I yeah. love his motto, like yeah. heart speaks on heart yeah it just like resonates I mean there's so many deep movements in mm -hmm. our lives that like words just can't speak to yeah, yeah like yeah. you have to encounter the heart of another person to receive healing to receive like knowledge like right. even in our relationship with the Lord even with our faith like we're so blessed with so much like intellect and right. philosophy and theology and like a deep human understanding of like who the Lord is but it will always like go further than that that's why yeah. a relationship is always necessary like that is where we encounter transformation is on a heart level yeah. And he understood that. What a guy. Yeah. He was so deeply in love with the Lord and you can see it through from the time he's 15 through his 
time as an Anglican priest through his conversion, he was so convicted that the truth was worth it. Like, yeah. goodness is worth it. Yeah. Purity of heart is worth it. There's been so many instances of rejection where I've, I've clung to him because I'm like, he knows what it is to lose, uh, lose relationship, lose friendship, mm -hmm. lose reputation. Just thinking about him and all of the saints, how they had like a very human experience mm -hmm. with their very human heart. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. like Newman understood, like you mm -hmm. told me earlier, life is short, eternity is long. Like mm -hmm. we're not made for the human experiences that we have. They form us and they shape us, but it's like not what we're made for. Yeah, I just love his like, human desire to seek the infinite. So you took an entire class on him. Do you have like highlights? People often ask me like, what, where should I start in reading him? Because mm -hmm. he just has this huge volume of writing. There's actually this little weird website called <laughs> The Newman Reader. It has all of his sermons, which I think is a great uh, place to start because they're all labeled. It's like sermon on hope, sermon mm -hmm. on the cross, sermon on like, and they're just all organized very, you know, like by year and all of that. So I think that's a great place to start just to get to know his heart before diving into the deep, big intellectual works because those are harder to take on when you like don't understand like who he is. He had a heart for preaching, especially to young people. And so I feel like that's where you get to know him. And then um, the bigger pieces make sense. Do you have a thing? I do, but I couldn't tell you I want to say it's... I'm not going to be able to name what it's called. That's okay. Just discover it for yourself. Let us know what your favorite is. Do you have a favorite quote? I mean, I would probably come back to that idea of the mission of the church being the regeneration of hearts. Mm. That's always stuck with me. There's there's yeah. a lot of like more that lot, idea is like Yeah, there's a lot of bigger sermons I would look back to, but I wouldn't be able to communicate them the way he does. I feel like my heart is just regenerating as you're speaking. <laughs> I got a lot to pray with now, so <laughs> yeah. mission accomplished. Yeah. It's a pleasure having you on here. Thanks for coming by all the way from DC. St. John Henry Newman, pray, pray for, for us. us. Bye.